Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I'm a registered nurse working at Vancouver Coastal Health with the Colon Screening Program. You've been contacted by the Colon Screening Program because we've received a referral from your family doctor. You've been referred to the program for one of two reasons. You have a family history of colon or rectal cancer, or you've had an abnormal stool test, or poo test. This stool test may have had some blood in it, and it's, it's recommended that a colonoscopy be done to determine where the bleeding is coming from. A colonoscopy is recommended because it can prevent colon cancer by finding and removing polyps before they turn into cancer. Polyps are small tissue growths that can develop in the lining of the colon or the rectum and sometimes have the potential to develop into a cancer. Colonoscopy can find cancer early, and early detection means more treatment options and better outcomes. The purpose of a colonoscopy is to have a look at the colon, which includes the large intestines and the rectum. The large intestines are about 5 feet long, and its function is to absorb water and minerals from digested food. The rectum is used to store undigested waste. The procedure is performed in a hospital by a colonoscopist. You can expect to be in the hospital for two to three hours on the day of your procedure. Upon arrival to the unit, a nurse will complete your admission by asking you questions about your health history and taking your vital signs. Your nurse will ask you to change into a hospital gown and you'll be asked to provide a list of the current medications you are taking. Please bring this list with you. A nurse will start an IV or intravenous to administer sedation and pain medication during the procedure. At this point, you'll be brought into the procedure room and this is where you'll meet your colonoscopist. Your doctor will be asking you to sign a consent form allowing him or her to perform the procedure. If you have any questions for the doctor, this would be a good time to ask. A colonoscopy usually lasts 20 to 45 minutes. You're closely monitored before, during, and after your procedure. Before the start of the procedure, you'll be given sedation and pain medication. The purpose of this medication is to make you feel drowsy and relaxed, but you'll still be able to follow commands and hear what's going on around you. The goal of the medication is to keep you comfortable throughout the procedure and not to put you to sleep. You'll be asked to lay on your left side throughout the procedure and the doctor will insert the scope into the rectum and advance it along the length of the colon. Air is sent in through the scope to expand the colon for better viewing. This may cause discomfort. It's normal throughout the procedure to feel slight pressure or to experience cramps. Images of the lining of the rectum and the colon are sent to a video monitor where the doctor will look for anything unusual like a polyp. It may be necessary to take a tissue sample or a biopsy or to remove the polyp, a polypectomy. If any of these are seen during the procedure, this is generally painless. The biopsy or the polyp is then sent to the lab for analysis. To prepare for your colonoscopy, you should avoid eating any foods containing nuts, corn, seeds, and whole grains. Examples of this would be granola, multigrain breads, any fruits containing seeds like strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, for five days prior to your test. If you're taking iron supplements or a multivitamin which contains iron, please stop this medication seven days prior to your procedure. If you're taking insulin or blood thinners, like aspirin, warfarin, Plavix, or Zoralta, please ensure that you've discussed this with your family doctor at least two weeks prior to your procedure. You are asked to drink only liquids for 24 hours prior to your colonoscopy. Please do not eat any solid foods. Clear liquids include fluids that you can see through, for example, apple juice, water, or clear broth. 
Any liquids that you cannot see through or have solid matter in them are not allowed. For example, milk or congee. You'll also be asked to purchase and take a laxative and a stool softener to help prepare and clean out your bowels. These instructions will either be emailed or mailed to you. You'll be asked to purchase and take either Bipeg Light, Peg Light, Coal Light, or Go Lightly. These bowel preparations can be purchased at most drugstores or pharmacies and they generally cost between $25 and $30. It is important to closely follow the bowel preparation's instructions as the success of the colonoscopy depends on how clean your bowels are. The picture on the left shows poorly prepared bowels. It's hard for the doctor to see anything when the bowels are full of poo. The picture on the right shows well prepared bowels. When the colonoscopist can see the lining of your bowels, he or she is better able to diagnose abnormalities and or polyps. If the bowel preparation is inadequate, you may have to repeat your procedure. If the colonoscopy sees any abnormalities in your colon, he or she may take a biopsy, which is a small tissue sample. Any polyps or biopsies taken will be sent to the laboratory for further testing. The results of the laboratory testing will be sent to your family doctor. A patient coordinator from the colon screening program will contact you for your results and follow-up recommendations two weeks after your colonoscopy. After your procedure, you'll be brought into the recovery area. Nurses will monitor you in this area for 30 minutes. You'll be given discharge instructions prior to leaving the hospital. Ensure your ride comes to the hospital two and a half hours after your arrival time. Because you've been given sedation, you're legally impaired for 24 hours after the medication is administered. This means you cannot drive a car. You must have a family member, friend, or responsible adult come directly to the unit to pick you up after your procedure. You may take a taxi or the bus as long as you are accompanied by a family member, friend, or responsible adult. There are some risks and potential complications related to having a colonoscopy, but they're extremely rare. These risks include bleeding from your colon, a small tear or perforation in the lining or the wall of the colon, a reaction to the bowel preparation, a reaction to the medications used during the procedure, an infection, or heart or lung problems. Healthy lifestyle choices can help you reduce the risk of developing colorectal cancer. Here are a few tips. Consume a diet high in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, and eat red and processed meats in moderation. Exercise regularly, limit alcohol intake, don't smoke, maintain a healthy weight, and get screened.